Welcome back to Hannity. A battle is brewing between President Obama and Republican lawmakers over who will fill Justice Scalia's seat on the Supreme Court. Earlier today, during a press conference, President Obama said he will nominate a candidate. Watch this. The Constitution is pretty clear about what is supposed to happen now. When there is a vacancy on the Supreme Court, the President of the United States is to nominate someone. The Senate is to consider that nomination and either they disapprove of that nominee or that nominee is elevated to the Supreme Court. Should we interpret your comments just now that you are likely to choose a moderate nominee? Would you No. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, the, uh, I, I, I don't know where you found that. You shouldn't assume anything about the qualifications of the nominee otherwise, other than they're going to be well qualified. And while President Obama vows to nominate a replacement, many of the 2016 GOP presidential candidates, well, they believe it should be the next president's decision. Take a look. The entire balance of power on the court hangs, hangs in the balance here. I believe we should make 2016 a referendum on the U.S. Supreme Court. Let the voters decide. If the Democrats want to fill this vacancy, they need to win in November. The president has every right to submit a name, and the Senate has every right either to have an up or down vote or to, to defer. I don't think there's any problem with doing that. They can function with eight justices. Their term ends in the middle part of this year. Then we're going to have an election in November where the voters are going to get to weigh in on what kind of justice they want by casting their vote for the right president. I think what's going to happen is he'll put in somebody who's probably a little more moderate than he would have normally done. I still think the Republicans should reject. I think the new president should have that option. I just think at a time when the country is so divided, it would just be great if... Uh, the president didn't send somebody forward, and we had an election, and then everybody would be clear about uh, what they want in the next Supreme Court justice. Now, the president also filibustered Sam Alito and Justice Alito, and also he went against Judge Roberts, but yet he said both were qualified. You may remember this. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that Judge Roberts is qualified to sit on the highest court in the land. Moreover, he seems to have the comportment and the temperament that makes for a good judge. He's humble, he's personally decent, and he appears to be respectful of different points of view. And it's absolutely clear to me that Judge Roberts truly loves the law. Now, I have no doubt that Judge Alito has the training and qualifications necessary to serve. As been already uh, stated, he has received the highest rating from the ABA. He's an intelligent man and an accomplished jurist. There's no indication that he's not a man of fine character. Back with us with reaction, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. To me, Mr. Speaker, this is a do or die moment for the Senate. Now, they promised repealing and replacing Obamacare. They never fought the fight. They never used the power of the purse. 2014, they said they'd stop executive amnesty. They broke that promise as well. They now have said they will stop this nomination. If they back down, to me, I think so many Republicans are going to wash their hands of these people. I mean, totally just well, forget it. I, look, I don't want to preemptively worry about them backing down. This, this is probably Mitch McConnell's finest hour. Uh, he is a great tactician. He understands the Senate remarkably well. Uh, he has indicated clearly uh, the president might as well not send anybody up because they're not going to have a hearing, they're not going to be voted on, uh, and they're not going to come to the floor. Now, he can actually enforce that You see, that but if you easily. were the Senate Majority Leader, I'd have faith that you'd hold the line. I don't have that faith in Mitch McConnell. Oh, I, no, I think McConnell, look, M McConnell understands what's at stake here. Uh, this is a huge 25-year historic balance of power. Uh, and, and uh, for example, every person in America who cares about the Second Amendment is going to be up in arms over this whole issue and is going to be telling their congressmen, their senators, you know, you cannot allow the president to appoint a radical, and that's what the president's going to do, uh, and you can't shift the balance of power. And there would be something really wrong about uh, the, this, the, the idea of replacing Justice Scalia, who was the leading intellectual conservative of our generation, with a left winger. Uh, there's something wrong with that. So I, I think you're going to find that the Senate is going to be overwhelmingly committed 
uh, to just not paying attention to it and going on to other I, topics. Listen, I hope you're right, but I think people like myself who've been disappointed have cause for skepticism. All right, you've got to though laugh. It is very funny. Let's play Chuck Schumer, 18 months left in the Bush presidency with what he's saying now, because it's pretty humorous. Watch this. The job, first and foremost, is for the president to nominate and for the Senate to hold hearings and go through the process. You know, the Constitution, Ted Cruz holds the Constitution uh, when he walks through the halls of Congress. Let him show me the clause that says the president's only president for three years. To leave the Supreme Court vacant for 300 days in a divided time, this kind of obstructionism isn't going to last. And you know, we Democrats didn't do this. We should not confirm any Bush nominee to the Supreme Court except in extraordinary circumstances. They must prove. They must prove by actions, not words, that they are in the mainstream, rather than we have to prove that they are not. That was in July of 07. 450 days left in Bush's you presidency. Know, you, you, you seldom get such clear, blatant hypocrisy yeah. uh, as you do with Schumer in this case. Uh, and, it, and of course, it strips any sense of moral authority away from the case. This is a place where, where uh, Hillary's little dog would be barking uh, because, you know, I mean, okay. Schumer, Schumer is so clearly being uh, dishonest. Uh, and, and he was very happy to block conservatives when George W. Bush was there. But now he's unhappy if the, if, if the same thing comes around on a shorter time frame, as you pointed out. He's giving that speech in July of last year. Uh, in comparative presidential time. In July time. of 07, in the, in, oh, with right. 18 months left in the Bush presidency. So, you know, so, yeah. but, here, but here, I think, is what people have got to remember. Nothing in the Constitution and nothing in American history requires the Senate to approve the president's nomination. Presidents don't appoint, they nominate. And we've had a number of cases going back all the way into the... Uh, uh, actually all the way back to John Quincy Adams period uh, in the early 19th century, where it's taken a long time. We, we had one uh, president who sent up nine different people and, and only got two of them approved. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a long precedent for this. The Senate Republicans are exactly within their rights. Uh, and my hope is that every conservative in the country uh, is going to be reinforcing for their senators, you are doing the right thing, hang tough, uh, do your constitutional job, which is not to give Barack Obama what he wants, but it's to preserve that seat for the next president to make a choice. And that, by the way, will really increase the importance of the presidential well election said. this fall. Well said. All right, Mr. Speaker, I hope they hold the line. Thank you.